Hey everyone, so I hope you're having a great day today. So somehow I missed this story that I couldn't not talk about in the last episode of the podcast because I I read through this story and I kid you not, I felt embarrassed for the DNC. I felt ashamed for them. So basically, this story from The Hill talks about what the DNC is doing to take on Donald Trump. And they are currently trying to beef up their communications and opposition research on Donald Trump. So what they are doing is they're creating this thing called the War Room. Now, what this War Room is, is going to be basically their task force that they're forming uh, to attack Donald Trump, to defeat Donald Trump, to stop him from doing harmful policies. Now, in theory, I have no problem with a war room to take on Donald Trump if it has the correct strategy and if they're still going to focus on other aspects of voter outreach, on planning where the party should go in terms of policy. But this war room is a joke, and it really illustrates that the DNC doesn't only not know what they need to do to effectively take on Donald Trump, but that they almost want to lose. Like when I read this, I think they must not want to lose as part of a, or they must want to lose as part of a strategy. Like if they lose, they can come back in four years and say, well, we're the underdogs. Uh, Give us a chance. Like, like I I can't come to any other conclusions because this is so ridiculous. Now, their priorities are a joke. So we'll talk about the priorities, but also the people who they are hiring is a joke too. So Let me go over some of these people. So one individual who will be part of the war room is a guy named John Neffinger. He is a former Clinton staffer and a, quote, Democratic strategist. So if you worked for the Hillary Clinton campaign and you were beaten by Donald Trump before, I don't necessarily think that you should be part of a war room that is going to be taking on Donald Trump, but, you know, that's just me. But let's see who the other people are. So we have Zach Petkanis. He is Clinton's former rapid response director and communications director to Harry Reid. He'll be the head of the war room. So the person who was the rapid response director to Hillary Clinton, which... I would think they didn't even have a rapid response director with how terrible the campaign was ran. Uh, This guy will be the head of the war room. So, so far we have two Clinton staffers who will be in very dominant positions in this war room. Now we also have Adrian Watson. This is the former communications director at, at Correct the Record. Correct the Record. So, they're putting someone who does PR for a super PAC as part of the war room. Okay, for one... You can't, like, super PACs and corruption, these are things that are inextricably linked. So by associating with people that come from super PACs, you are basically telling voters that you don't care about their concerns over corruption and money in politics and super PACs, and you don't even care how it's going to look. You're putting someone who does PR, who does damage control for this corrupt super PAC who literally paid $1 million to combat trolling online. That's what they spent their money on. Imagine if they spent that on voter outreach. You're paying someone to be part of the DNC war room to take on Donald Trump that was one of Hillary Clinton's many super PACs. So you're telling us that you want to be more corrupt. You're embracing corruption. Awesome. That sounds like a great plan. Now, they also have Tessa Simmons. Now, this is an individual who dug up dirt on Donald Trump during the campaign, and she will be the digital director for the war room. Now, Digging up dirt on Trump, if you were not effective at successfully taking his campaign, then I don't see why you're here. It's a joke to me. Now, let me get to their priorities. So, among the War Room's priorities will be to champion a congressional investigation into Russia's alleged interference in the 2016 election, which many Democrats blame for Clinton's defeat. You've got to be kidding me. So... Do you want to know, if you could pick anything, what's one way to not get someone to vote for you? Uh, It's to blame someone else for your failed candidate. Okay, for one, during the prime, or during the campaign, excuse me, everyone was telling us in the media that there was no bombshells in the WikiLeaks revelations from John Podesta's emails. And all of a sudden, we're supposed to believe that it cost Hillary Clinton the election? I mean, you guys did a complete 180. So we went from believing that WikiLeaks had no impact, and even many progressive independent media outlets like myself were saying, you guys, I think that we need to be objective and cover this. You guys said that there were no bombshells, and this is based on evidence, intelligence reports that we're not allowed to see. So anything that we know about this comes from anonymous CIA officials. 
why are they anonymous? What do they have to hide? If they're that confident in their assessment, then why can't we see the results? And even if it's the case that you can prove that Russia did it, did Russia rig Hillary Clinton and make her malfunction and not campaign in Wisconsin where she lost? I don't know. So, um, you know, I don't know what the end game here is for the Democrats with this hysteria against Russia. You know, if we can prove that Russia did it, then I don't know what your goal is. Do you want war with them? You know, it's ridiculous. Now, anyways, let's get to their other priorities. They'll also be fighting for the GOP's, they'll be fighting the GOP's attempts to repeal Obamacare and looking to dig up dirt on Trump's egregious and, un and unethical self-dealing as well as his appointment of nominees whose extreme policies would actively undermine the missions of their respective agencies uh, that they are opposed to pursuing. So look, here's the thing. I get that you need to dig up dirt on Donald Trump, so I would see why in theory you would want this type of war room, but if you guys want to win, you have to do something very simple. You have to reach out to voters. Attacking Trump was your main strategy. Hillary Clinton campaign as someone who was not Trump and she lost. She didn't have a message. If anything should be communicated to both parties during this election, it's that people don't come out to vote against someone. They come out to vote for someone. And obviously, not enough people in the right places came out to vote for Hillary Clinton because she really didn't give them anything to vote for. I don't know what I'm with her means. I don't know what stronger together means. I want like concrete policies that you're putting forward. So really, if you if you want to win again, you just have to give voters a reason to vote for you. And you can propose very popular policies. You can say that you're in favor of a single-payer healthcare system. You can say that you're in favor of tuition-free college. You can say that you're in favor of a $15 minimum wage, that you're going to fight against these disastrous free trade deals that ship our jobs overseas. Like, if you do that, and maybe if you become the party of anti-war policies again, if you say that we need to pull out of Iraq, pull out of Afghanistan and not invade any other countries, if you pitch to the American people that you're going to end the drone wars that President Obama ramped up during his, his presidency, you can win again. You have to reach out to the voters. So attacking Trump, that's one strategy that I think that you should have. But it really seems as though with this war room, they're making it their main center of focus. And I think that's going to be devastating for them in 2018 and 2020 if they really do focus on this. Obviously, these same people who lost to Donald Trump once, they don't have the correct strategy to beat him and be effective in uh, basically fighting against anything that he's going to do that's harmful, like privatizing Social Security, repealing the Affordable Care Act. You guys have got to get your shit together. Like, this is a joke. I read this and I'm terrified because you are the one party who can effectively combat Donald Trump's agenda. And if you are going to focus on this, we're going to be in for a really, really terrible and downright scary time. So I just wanted to talk about this because the Democratic Party, they're just, it seems like they're a lost cause at this point. So if they don't appoint Keith Ellison as the DNC chair, I think the situation is officially hopeless at that point. So we'll wait and see. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.